Friday, we've been averaging about seven, eight hours to well for the day. Before we were running 24 hours straight. Yeah. For three days a week. The other days were 20 hours a day. So now we're back up to the normal kind of routine. So, so we're in good yes. So we're in good shape. So anyway, uh, so that's, there's nothing to act on. I'm just I'm informing the council. We're going to roll with that. We'll change the subject. Next up, we have a consideration ordinance adopting the 2018 property tax rate. As I stated before, we've had three public hearings on the property tax. Uh, any questions on the property tax? Motion by anybody to approve that? A motion to approve the current property tax. How do I say that? The ordinance adopting the property tax rate? The ordinance. Motion to approve the ordinance for the proposed property tax. Okay. Uh, motion. Uh, second. I second. Clint seconds it. All those in favor? Clint, all those got our hands tied up. Okay. Oh, I should need it. All right. Second. Good and all. All in favor? Everybody. Mr. Roll, call that. Oh, for the tax code's roll? Yeah. Oh. Mayor Phil Tenry? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Councilman Shields? Yes. Councilman Shields? Yes. Councilman Yes. Okay. All right, next up, we have ratification of Ordinance 1802 adopting the fiscal tax year 1819 budget. So, again, this is standard um, for new council members. Uh, there's two steps to do it. By the first, you adopt it, and then the next one, you have to come back and say, yeah, we, we really meant what was the last year. So, it's a, it's, a, it's a roll call again with it. It's a roll call vote for the ratification of the budget to be adopted last week. If you were not present at the last meeting, you can still vote. You have a choice. You can either say yes or you can stay here. You have all the questions. Still have the motion, is that right? I'm sorry? You still have the motion this morning? Yes. Okay. My motion to approve the Ordinance 1802 for fiscal year 1819 budget. Mayor Pro Tem Reed? Yes. Councilman Bishon? Yes. Councilwoman Lutley? Yes. <coughs> Councilwoman Shields? Abstaining. Councilman West? Yes. Every year, and have to just go in and reprogram it and change it. 
I prefer if we lock things down and then we don't have to do them again. Lock them down and move on. We got other stuff we got to do. We got to deal with wells and potentially new concrete roads and new development. And there's lots of stuff coming down the pike at us. And let's just lock and load and get these things out of the way. And that was kind of a mandate to, to with Linda to go off and find out what we can do. So there was a, a really nice conversation with Allied. They came in and showed us all the data. Um, they showed us some charts. And as uh, I don't know how much the council is aware of what's happened in the past, but the recycling side of the house has flipped its side. So it used to be recycling was a net gain to the garbage company. They could sell it. It's flipped. It's now a negative number. It costs more to recycle than the revenue they're getting. Because they cannot send the paper overseas anymore. They used to be able to send the paper overseas to Asia and they would get, you know, some number, let's say, you know, two hundred dollars a ton. Well, now the number's like five dollars. And it's got to be 99% pure. They basically won't take it. So the recycling side of the house of all the garbage companies across the land has crashed. And what they're doing with a lot of cities is they're flat out charging them to do recycling. It's no longer money. It's, you're having to pay to have them recycle your stuff. And that's that's the way it is. That is the current state of the way the world is. The recycling has turned around. So, and they came, and, and I know, I know they're not making, I know that's a fact because you, I've read it in the Wall Street Journal, and it, it's real. Especially the paper rates have crashed, the, the, all that recycled paper. So a lot of garbage companies right now are renegotiating, and they're making the cities pay for recycling. You've got to pay for it on top of the garbage. Um, and I instructed them not to do that here. We're not going to, just, I want one rate, I want it simple, what's the garbage rate? Give us the rate. I don't want to have 17 parameters and dials to throw. What's the rate? And so they told us that the rate would start at 2050, which would be our new rate. So right now it's 1750, it would go to 2050. And again, that's, I think that's reasonable after not moving it basically for eight years. And then the choice becomes, how do we want to structure it after that? So they came up with several of these options. So. Um, Option number one is, uh, let's see, option number one is there's basically a 3% annual increase every year. You can do that. Um, option two was the rate's good for one year, and then in year two it switches and stays good for two years, and then it switches again in the last two years. So it's a 1 2, two <coughs> scenario. And that would be 5% would be the two raises. So it's 1 2 2. And the other one is three and five, so basically it's two and two. These are different parameters, right? And then the one is, I, I made them say, give me a number to fix it for five years straight. Lock it for five years, no annual changes. And that's the, the 2177. Um, the idea tonight is, there's no ordinance in front of you, it's just, they want to know what do we want so that they can draft the, the ordinance. I'm sorry, they can draft a new contract. So, um, the other part of this is, uh, as a way to kind of save some money, kind of rearrange things for us, um, I asked them if they could rearrange it so that we do both quarterly. So, there's two advantages to that. One, let's only trash the city four times a year. Second, we can get it off the every other month, which is our holiday schedule. The damn thing seems to be right around every holiday, right? It's New Year's. It's July 4th. It's Halloween. It's Labor Day. The odd months are the weekends right before our Monday holidays. And we trash the place. So they agreed that it would be much better for them if we did it quarterly because then what they could do for us is they would guarantee, like, let's say we did it on, you know, April 15th. Not on a, but in April, a Saturday, April 15th. They could guarantee to us that they would have roll offs here. So they would literally go into town, grab the stuff, drop it, start picking up again, have them drive it away. They would have like a shuttle system. So they could bolt the whole town in one day. Guaranteed to do it one day and we're out of here. Would it be the same limitation on it now? Exactly. The same limitations for us, same 10 yards. But it would be more streamlined. 
to me, that's the way to go. I mean, four times a year is a lot. I mean, four times is good enough. You got bulk trash. I mean, every other month is a little much, I think. So that was a way to try and save some cost. I, I did ask them if they would entertain once a year having something like, you can bring us your paint cans, bring us your tires, have a collection of whatever, you know, your electronics, your <laughs> television sets, or, yeah, that, like a, you know, one of those things that you, if you stick it out of bulk trash, they ain't picking it up. And um, I can't give you the exact phrasing, but the words from them was pretty much, they don't want to do that. And, and, and we, if you ask us to price it, like, you're not going to get the price. And basically, it was yeah, pretty like easy. The they don't want it. They don't want us to do that. Um, but we'll see. I still want to do something like that. So these four options, if you just do the math on them, is, you know, one of them is, is are they all the same price? Are they cheap, one cheaper than the other? Well, I mean, basically, what it, I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's almost, you know, they're going to get the same amount of money almost, right? It's literally like, you know, you can pay your mortgage once a week, you can pay your mortgage once a month, every other month. At the end of the day, you pay off the same mortgage. So these four options work out over the five years, being the same. To them, they've done their math to say, you know, look, 3% a year, we get this much money from Michael Gutch. Right. If we do it 5%, twice over the five years, we'll get that much money. They don't care. They, what we're paying in is, you know, if, we're, if I live here five more years, I'm going to pay in the same amount no matter what option. It's so, I didn't run to it now, but essentially it, it should be for them. There's a little bit of a break. Like, you know, if you do 5% after two years, that's not the same as 3% a year. There, there's a little bit of math involved because, you know, it's almost like you know, if, if on average, like an average 2177, well, over the five years, that's a fixed number. Which means, conceptually, you'd probably be overpaying in the first year. Right. But you'd be underpaying in the last year. And, you know, because we right now it's 2050. Yeah, I realize the, the year. So the math is all the same. Yeah. Is this for the new quarterly? It's fuzzy math. Yes, this is all with the new quarterly. Okay. And, and the idea being that for us administratively, we try and do things to make it easier for us because we don't usually adjust our rates a lot. We, we keep the rates fairly fixed for long periods of time. That's why, you know, even though it's been <coughs> eight years, we've changed the garbage price once in eight years. Because it actually went up, I think, four times, but we ate it twice. We didn't even pass it on. We just said, forget it, it's too small. We're not even going to bother changing the customer's number by, you know, 15 cents. So, on this side down, I mean, is there any, does anybody have any? I, you know, it's one of those, if you, you know, small increments, if you increase a little bit every year, it's palatable, but then every year, you know, it's kind of psychologically, it goes up every year. So I kind of like either options where it's, you know, adjusted every two years or every three years. I, I kind of like two, option two, really. But yeah, I didn't I, like I it. Has, it's, got to, it's got to increase, right? Their cost increase, you know. The one with the fixed price, they kind of, they didn't do what I wanted. Yeah, it's yeah, fixed, yeah. Unless yeah, they have to change it. Put, yeah, conditional <laughs> that's, not, yeah. that's not fixed. If you can pass along an increase in the middle, then that's not what we want. I, I think for me, option two or three, whatever, is easier administratively. Now, the way to read that, by the way, is when it says like year two and four, it would be at the start of year right. two. That, that's the way that they interpreted that. So, um, what do you think, Liz? Yeah. I mean, the way the contract reads is they are, you know, there's always an out for them if there's some, you know, uh -huh. some big issue happens, if the landfill does something. Um, but with us, they've been very good about not nickel and diming us. We've been, they've been very good to us about, um, like I said, really not doing that and us holding the line. Because remember, if we change the garbage, we've got to change the sales tax changes too. And the extra can changes. So every time we change it, we've got to go back in the menu and rechange 
Yeah, it's too bad to that in an if statement in option four because you could just set it once for five. I know I'd love yeah. to have done that. They they they, they killed me by by putting that in there. Then that's not really fixed. Yeah, because that would have been like four point six percent increase yeah. over ten years. That would have been better. Yeah, see we you know, like I said, we They've been very good to us. Now, I will tell you that, for instance, in Little Allen, they, they adopt a five-year schedule where there's annual increases each year. They, they do these every five years. So they lock and load five years for them. Water bills, sewer bills, they do these five-year plans and lock and load everything in. We really haven't been doing that. Um, this is kind of our first foray into trying to lock something in for years already. Every contract we've ever had for them, every contract we've had, says they can come back annually for a CPI increase on the garbage CPI index annually. They've done it twice in eight years because we told them don't bother, it's too small. They accepted that. They accepted that, yes. yes. Uh, so uh, when you say too small, is that penny, nickel? Pennies. It's you know like we're gonna raise it, you know, 10 cents. Well Sometimes they, 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 rate, they say we're going to do that, and they, they don't. So just don't do it. They get back to their side and don't do it. What, what else are you looking for? for I'm looking for direction. Because, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to draft the contract now and put a number in. Okay. Um, we need a decision tonight, or can we? Well, these numbers aren't going to change. And I'm going to put a number in. So it sounds like we can scratch option four unless they, they give us yeah, some better guidance to right. cap it or yeah. have some sort of a. Some I'm, I think the takeaway is option one and option four. Uh, I don't think it is anybody entertaining an increase over here. Yeah. So we're looking at two or three. Okay. Okay. I'll just whatever, whatever, whatever works out to our advantage and okay. administratively works out for managing office. Okay. So we'll do that and I will, the contract will come back to you. So next month you'll see the full contract with, with everything. And yeah, we're definitely going to quarter, right? Quarterly bulk, I think, is the way to go. The nice thing about quarterly is we can pick the dates. Yeah, I think the way this reads is you pick an option and you get quarter bulk service. Yes. Um, okay. All right, thank you. All right, next up is a contract with uh, Saco and Burroughs for property tax collection. Okay, so now we're going we're gonna to have a series of uh, uh, ordinances in a row. So let me just preface this by saying, you know, there's, there's a lot of them that we're going to have banging away here in a row. So one of the issues um, that's come up, or where this is coming from, is that under the local government code, if you look at section 22, it says powers and duties of the mayor. So this is the, the duties of the mayor. And it says um, under section C, the mayor shall, shall give to the governing body any information and shall recommend to the governing body any measure that relates to improving the finances, security, or the good government of the municipality. So as basically the chief operating officer operating the town, it's my responsibility, it's a shall, I shall do it, to bring to the council things that need tweaking, things that where we've had some operational issues, things that need clarity, just some on the margin. We've got experience now, this isn't working quite the way we thought. We need to make some adjustments. And so that's what this represents, this kind of laundry list of, of ordinances where um, I'm recommending that we, we make some adjustments based upon what's happened since the ordinance is written. So everybody should have gotten a memo for every one. They should have had red lines on all of them. Um, I'm not going to go through the individual red lines, uh, but let's, uh, let's go. So the first one up is Saco and Burroughs for tax collection. We've had this for many years. Um, talking with Mark. I mean, we know we had, a, we had to spend time last time in July about delinquencies. Mark's suggestion to us was that we make it more transparent and just put it on autopilot. A lot of cities do that. Some cities do the other thing. Some cities want to know specifically who's delinquent and they want to take action themselves. It, it cuts both ways. I think it's better for us to stay out of it. As the council, just stay out of it put it on autopilot and let Mark do what he does best. These are his recommendations for the triggers. This is what other cities that have triggers have recommended, um, you know, whether it's financially a lot of money, whether it is um, something that's very, very behind, 
and or somebody that has a lot of properties, that way it's more efficient to go after one person if you can clear 10 accounts. Um, and this is what other cities have done. So any questions? Look how you were going to say something. Yeah, is this the person we talked to last time? <clears throat> we, we had soft questions. I can't remember how long. Well, I think for the moment I can recall way back when. At least 2000. Yeah, okay. these, these directives are basically kicking in because there is a certain amount owed. And if it goes over a threshold, then it becomes a good thing for us to let them just go get it. That's right. I mean, it, it's, it's automated so that, you know, under the tax code, they want you to be as fair as you can. Yeah, so we don't have to meet and say, should we go after this guy? Right, you know, let's, let's, let's give Linda a pass, but, you know, let's go after Danny. You know, let's, you know, yeah. let's do this, but not her, right? It, 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 we don't want to play that game. So a lot of city councils don't even want to know. They don't want to know. They just turn it over. Well, and there should be. <coughs> as we get to this point, then, then we go. It seems to make sense. Well, what I like about the auto triggers, we're such a small town, we know our neighbors. Let's, it takes it out of the hands. It's between yeah. you and your government entity and the third party to collect tax. Mm -hmm. well, I believe that the conversation that we had with him, it seems that they're pretty fair. I mean, they have conversations with the homeowner and they try to resolve it before going to the next step. Yeah. And they that, were more yeah. Yeah, this is July. Yeah, it's yeah. not like the IRS yeah. puts the hammer down. Yeah. Yeah. Were these his three? He you, you listed these three? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, when I talked to him, he said these are the typical triggers that other cities do. And he said, you know, he, he said the generic, you know, the dollar amount, the length of time, and, and the, you know, efficiency. My only question would have been number three, the many properties. Is that like two properties or is that ten properties? Yeah. Well, I mean, for, you know, for him, it, it just was a conceptual thing that, you know, it, for efficiency, right? Because one tax you can consolidate 20 properties into one because, let's say it's land plan. Yeah. And they've gone belly up and they've got 20 lots out there they yeah. still own. Yeah, you know, I, 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 think, I think the mini properties is more of a developer or a land speculator, right? It's not just like a homeowner that has three or four houses. Yeah, we, we've yeah. never had that here. Yeah, right? more likely people that own land throughout the county. And it was an efficiency play that, you know. Um, right. And to Lizzie's point, he is very fair, right? Yeah. He's, I mean, it starts with a letter of conversation. It doesn't start with the wrong court. Exactly. Right. It's July 15th is the trigger date. Yeah, it's so six it's months it's late. So. Ed, did you have something to say? No. No. All right. I agree. You good? Mm -hmm. All right. So what we're looking at is, um, uh, is, is a motion to authorize me to execute the contract with software firms. Can I make a motion to uh, authorize the mayor to execute this uh, contract with software firms? Okay. I second. Okay. Uh, motion and a second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. All right. Next up is um, consideration of the certificate of occupancy ordinance. Um, all right, so very briefly, um, in this, the CO ordinance has been tremendously successful for Lake and Village. We imposed this thing about 10 years ago where we actually went and did inspections. Um, it's been uh, very, very good for us. There were some situations which are horribly uh, dangerous that we've been able to catch. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the issues that's come up operational time is we don't have such thing as a temporary CO. It's not in the ordinance. It never, never was. But we had to create it out of necessity. Um, whereas, um, let's say, for example, Linda's new to the town, she shows up on Friday and, and says, oh my gosh, you know, I'm new, I need a CO, because so I just bought the house on Hillside. And we say, oh, okay, we'll have, we'll have, Steve will run out there and do it tonight, we'll get it done, blah, 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 and you don't have a smoke detector outside your bedroom. You fail. Well, your movies are coming tomorrow. What are we gonna, you, how do we tell you you can't move in your house because you're missing a smoke detector. Technically speaking, you didn't pass. You were stuck. Look, just go buy a smoke detector, put it up, take a picture, but Steve can't come back till Monday. Or, you know, so we have situations where it's clearly not a problem. We need to have some flexibility, but the ordinance gave us none. 
the house is either safe or it's unsafe. And if it's unsafe, you can't occupy it. You can't put furniture in. You can't do anything. So we created some flexibility in this house. But then we have people who are doing remodeling who come in and, and, and ask us, I can't get power to the house unless you do a CO, but I'm going to rip the power out to redo the house, the chicken and egg. And we allow them then a temporary CO. The power company gives them power, but there's a drawback. <coughs> Once you have power, the power company can't take it away. The only way the power company can disconnect the power is if you don't pay your bill. So if you tell us we're not going to do, we're not, we're not going to do the CO, we can't turn the power off. We've lost our leverage. So we've had problems with some of these remodels where they don't obey the CO. We had one guy years ago move in the house. He was going to tear it down. So we gave him until he gut it to tear it down. <coughs> Two months later, where, where are you? Well, he's living in it. He decided not to tear it down. He's going to live in it. What? It didn't get a CO. It didn't. So this has caused a problem. So the solution that I'm proposing is we actually put in the ordinance. We can do a temporary CO. But if it's longer than seven days, then you've got to have skin in the game. Because if it's longer than seven days, then you're going to put up basically like a bond. You're going to put up $1,000 that if you finish it in the 30 days or you know, if the building inspector gives you an extension because you're working, that's fine. But if you follow what we say and you do what the agreement says, you get your money back. We don't want your money. But, you know, we just had it twice where I had to go out and shut people off, turn the meters off, and they got very angry at Lakewood Village because we turned them off because they didn't follow the temp CO. We had an agreement with them, they violated the agreement, and then they got mad at us because they violated the agreement. So we, we got to fix it. So this is, again, an issue that's come up. And so this was the kind of the solution that I proposed. Um, Steve is OK with it. Obviously, the building inspector has the authority. Um, it's his call. If it's unsafe, you don't get a CO. You don't get nothing if he says it's a you know, unsafe condition. So are there any questions? I have a question about the seven days. So, uh, if they, it is a remodel and it's longer than seven days, you're saying they have to give the bond. If it's only going to be longer than seven days, if it's not, then it doesn't matter. Correct. Yeah, because what we and then is there a time limit after that? I didn't want to get too because the idea is to give us the flexibility that this one didn't give us. So, if, if you were doing a, a West Willard remodel, it was enormous. Then you still put up the bond, but as long as you're making progress and you know you were, were reasonable people, it, it's the people that get the temp CO and don't do anything. They just they have power. Now once they, once you have power and you have water and you have sewer, if you're good to go. Well, you know now the gutting of the house is kind of at your own pace. You don't really have any, and these jobs could take forever because you have no more incentive other than just. And, and that's what's hurting us, is we didn't have the way to, once it's on, we couldn't get kosher to turn it back off. Now, one of the nice things about the way I wrote it is, you know, look, if you don't want to put up the $1,000 and have the notarized agreement which says what you're going to do, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. But go buy a generator and bring in your water. We had somebody do that. They bought gas generators. And they brought in a water truck. And that's what they did. Fair enough. We're not giving you water and sewer, and you're not getting electricity from Coastal until you have a seat. Okay? Um, so, what I like about this um, is it still kind of insulates the council a little bit and allows the homeowner to come appeal to council. So, it's done through the building official site. I like that. The seven days is kind of nice. It's right, you don't have to do it every time. Um, Kind of a Serena, you know, the open end of this, but you know, if they want their money back, and we're still having to release the power and have to release the water, so I, I think an open ended, we're probably okay. And if not, we can revisit. I mean, we're continuously improved, right? We kind of have 
had nothing, and so now maybe we'll just see how this works. And then and, and like, the intent is to give them their money back. It, it's not to raise money. This is just to give you an incentive to do the thing right. That you said you were going to but I hope that budget line has a zero in it at the end of the year. We don't ever have to use that money. Yeah, there's a, as we play this out, there's a couple triggers, right? We put an end date on it, we raise the bond, we, you know, so we can thousand dollars seems, you know, on a big remodel, that's not a lot, but it's also a nice incentive that maybe it worked out good fit. Good smoke detector in. And this has been, I think on council, it's, it comes up maybe two or three times a year since I've been on council. So I mean this is this is time that needs to be addressed. Okay. All right, any other questions? Motion to approve uh, the changes, uh, red line changes noted in the COCSI inspection order. We're going to approve this ordinance, right? Yeah, it doesn't have an assigned number. Oh, yeah. Okay. We, yeah, we have a reserve name. Okay. It's probably a fly or something. But. Okay. So, all right. All right. I have a motion to approve the ordinance. Do I have a second? Second. So we have seconds. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. All right. Next up is, uh, again, consideration of the junk vehicles and parking ordinance. Uh, this is, again, uh, based on our, our history that we're running into here from the operations side. The junk car stuff is covered by state law. So there's, there's 15 pages of junk car. And towing a car in Texas requires pretty much an act of Congress. Towing a car is really hard. It's somebody's property. So the first 15 pages of this thing are straight out of state law, and they are the original ordinance. That's not changed. The only thing that changed is many years ago we had a debate about what was an improved service. Because people wanted to park boats and trailers and all sorts of stuff. And Harold Wood was on the council and Harold had some sheds and he had stuff. And so we debated about, look, fair's fair. You can't just jam it in your backyard. You have to put it on something. And we don't have an HOA, so we'll allow you to park stuff. But let's meet us halfway. Park it on something that's decent. You can park whatever you want. That's kind of the, the debate we had back in 2000 and, and like nine. The question was, what we did is we weren't sure what we wanted on the surface. So we left it a little bit vague to find out what people actually would do, and then go back later and find out, well, that's really not. Now that we've seen the kind of the implementation, how people are doing it, now we have a better idea about what we really see and what we don't want. Um, people got really clever when the price of concrete was high, and we had all sorts of craziness where people would go out and buy one bag of gravel and drop a bucket of gravel behind the four tires and say it's improved. And you know, people would put a paving stone to get at Lowe's, one of those square pavers down, and, and you know, park the trailer on that. And people got really creative on what was an improved surface. So what I'm, what I'm asking the council is that we've now seen this, and um, like we saw tonight with Mike Ballman and the variance, it's a different kind of area now where we're, people were instructing them to pour concrete pads 